Yeah. Be proud of the pool. <laughs> Decisions will be made. <laughs> you cannot be a woman. Talk too much. Don't, don't, don't put that in there. All right, before I get started here, I just want to say there was a lot more to that uh, video intro. Some of you already may have seen it, and uh, we really enjoyed making it. It was pretty funny. Uh, it was just goofing off. And, uh, you know, some of our, our goof off stump stuff comes from just, like, inspiration from the channel or just when my brother and I get together, we act like children. Uh, and that's, that's totally cool. Hello, children! <laughs> uh, but no, seriously. Uh, if you want to see uh, the rest of that video, it will be on Lawn Care Juggernaut on Facebook. That's a Facebook group. I'm going to start using that for um, just live videos that I might have uh, during the season. And then kind of behind the city scenes on video making. So if you want to see like some of the clips that couldn't make it to YouTube, uh, the reason why that couldn't make it to YouTube, that was actually supposed to upload today. So January 27th in the morning, um, but it got a worldwide ban. Normally when you use copyrighted music, the artist just takes the monetization, meaning they make whatever money you would make off that video, they actually take that money, which is totally cool. I'm not worried about that. Um, and it's it's completely okay because that's, that's their music and they spend a lot of time making that, kind of like how I spend a lot of time making the videos. Somebody came and ripped off my video, that'd be a little irritated, but whatever you know anyway some some artists are pretty cool with that others are like hey uh we don't want you doing that and this is how they get them to stop so you know it's whatever it really comes out of the preference and it's kind of luck of the draw and whether it can or not so sometimes you hear me use copyrighted music and in all honesty i prefer the copyrighted music because it sounds good man i want to make good videos um so having said that if you want to see the behind the scenes it's over in Long Care Juggernaut. Link is in the description. And uh, yeah, so let's get on to talking about the actual work here. I'm kind of going through and finding some of my older videos as we get into the season. I'm kind of trying to clear up my hard drive. And uh, so what I'm finding here is like this video was 2018. Um, we have uh, blue work shirts. I kind of like changing that up every other year. If you're wanting to brand your business, keeping a consistent color is a good thing to do. Um, and if you're a solo guy, I don't necessarily think um, work shirts are a great form of advertising. You hear a lot of people say that's, oh, it's for advertising. But in all honesty, um, yeah, people will take your number off of it. But if you're a smaller residential guy and you're solo, you want your route tight anyways. So they're not going to walk up to you and get your number off the shirt. If they're going to walk up to you in the neighborhood you're working in, they're going to get your number from you from a card or from your truck or whatever it might be um, a door hanger that you put out a flyer or you know a sign in the yard anyways uh, I, I don't know that I can honestly track down any job that my shirts have ever given me but what it does do is if you start adding employees it gives them a sense of culture it gives them a sense of being part of something and it makes them take your business a little bit more serious even if it's a small business like mine and they're showing up to your house and um, you know all your equipment's in your garage and not a shop then yeah that's where um, I think shirts are, are play a part in a business in a small scale on a large scale yeah it's all culture thing I don't think it's so much advertising as culture so that's my opinion on that um, but, you know, I mean, as you go into advertising, that's, that's your own specific uh, idea on what you're going to do. So I'm trimming up some uh, boxwoods. Um, these, these type of boxwoods have real fine uh, leaves on them. And if you go past the canopy, if you notice the one that I'm on there, the second boxwood in, it's been trimmed before and it was trimmed too far into the canopy, it'll actually leave a dead spot. Um, and it's going to take a long time to heal if it ever heals. Um, this other boxwood up here, these are really, you'll just notice different 
bushes have different uh, leaves and different canopies. Ideally, you want to keep everything maintained on a regular basis. If you're cutting off a whole bunch, it's kind of like grass. If you're cutting off too much, it's not healthy for it. Um, but, you know, you, you'll learn what you can and cannot do. Kind of my safe way of doing it is I don't go past the canopy where it starts getting woody. I don't like cutting into that. So unless it's a special request or a bush like privet or, say, a crepe myrtle, something that you can trim to the ground and not have an issue with, um, you know, on it growing back, then no big deal. Collies normally grow back, no problem. Um, boxwoods aren't as hardy. I mean, they're a hardy bush, but they're not as hardy. Now, the other thing is we're in the winter right now. It's January. Sometimes you have to watch out on when you prune certain things, like boxwoods are pretty sensitive, sensitive to being trimmed in the cold. You can trim them this time of year. Like right now, it's like 50, 60 degrees outside. Um, if it was really, really cold, which some years we have really, really cold winters where I'm at, um, then I would hold off on trimming. And you, you want them to be able to um, heal up before there's a, a hard freeze. Otherwise, they'll get um, what's called winter burn. And then they just kind of have this yellowish um, look to them. Sometimes that causes permanent damage. Most of the time, uh, where I'm at, it doesn't really get cold enough to do much. And they bounce right back in the spring. Um, the other thing is, like, with boxwoods, you'll start really noticing on boxwoods first if your blades are dull because uh, they'll get like that just that yellow tip on them just like on grass when your blades are dull on grass you'll get a, like a yellow tip um, some some bushes are a little more hardy and they can handle the abuse uh, also I think boxwood you're supposed to hand prune them dude I use my trimmers on everything um, just pretty much everything residential you can use a trimmer on I guess that's the wrong thing to tell you I don't know, consult Google or whatever, or become a master gardener, but as as a lawn care guy, just about everything can be taken care of with a pair of hedge trimmers, and then crepe myrtles I, I hand prune. Um, when I'm cleaning out the inside of a tree, I use a machete and I hand prune smaller stuff as well. Uh, if I'm taking bigger limbs, then I use my pole saw. Um, but anyways, on this specific job, we're trimming the bushes, and just say that um, I was gonna do everything on this property so I'm, I'm doing a spring cleanup or whatever it might be because that's when the time of the year we're getting into right I would trim the bushes first um, then I would blow out all the leaves if there's piled up leaves against the bushes I would blow them out so they're out of my way then trim the bushes um, but then I would blow out everything so in this job you're gonna notice that we're trimming then we blow out then we do the mulch and that allows me to have this scenario where if I were to put the mulch in and then trim it's gonna get the mulch dirty obviously but the other thing is you do want to try to get most of that uh, bulk material out because when you put the mulch in you're gonna notice um, some of that coming to the surface as you spread the mulch out and it's just gonna drive you nuts so always try to get your trimmings out in the past I have had times where I didn't get all the leaves out or I didn't get all the mulch out and I'm like ah oh, it'll be fine and then it it man it like always comes to bite you so just you know take the time blow it out be done with it um, if I'm going to service a property and I'm doing uh, bush trimming I try to pair that with mowing so trimming the bushes and then mowing what I did notice this year is that we were so busy we couldn't pair bush trimming with mowing so it's getting to the point where we're busy enough that we need full days geared towards nothing but trimming which is really 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 tasking on the body it doesn't sound like it would be a big deal but a lot of my trimming is um, I, would, I would call it like mid-range it's not real high not real low stuff so this is some lower stuff uh, you can do all this with a small pair of trimmers if I was gonna choose uh, a trimmer setup obviously I love these HS 45s um, I'm not sponsored by anybody. This is just what I like. Um, and the reason why I like them, to be honest, is they are incredibly powerful and the price is right. They're cheap. That's always something that I take into consideration. I've tried the Echoes. Um, they're, a, I, I want to say, $20 or $40 cheaper. Um, but the um, articulating speed isn't quite as fast. So, you know, I like a high 
high articulation speed. Um, it, it just comes down to preference. You might like them lower. Also, these HS45s are a lot lighter, but the gas tank is small too. So that's that's kind of a downside of them. Uh, they run out of gas nonstop. Um, so there's some bushes up front. There's some bushes on the side, and there's some bushes on the back on this one. Uh, overall, it took us probably, I want to say around an hour to do the job start to finish. And uh, what you see on video here is about 30 minutes of it. And uh, I want to say it was somewhere around 300, 350. And this is 2018, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, so the HS45, if I was going to choose what trimmers, I like those a lot. I would say whatever brand you like or whatever's close to you. So a lot of what brand I buy is comes down to the dealer close to me. Um, if you can only get Home Depot stuff, go to Home Depot. Um, these HS45s are cool. I've also tried Husqvarna's. They're really similar to um, the Echoes, but they were lighter than the Echoes. Um, so like a couple of years ago, my parents brought me a couple uh, Husqvarna trimmers and since then, after having a couple steals, I, I've sold them off, you know, and they just didn't have a place in my company. Not saying they were bad, it's just I want what's quickest, and the articulating speed's awesome. The other thing I use is I like to have the uh, PAS Weed Eater. Um, I, I normally go for the biggest one I can get. Like, I got the 2620, and then a few weeks later, they came out with that 32-whatever, Um now I think they're calling they're calling them different names now. I don't know what they're what they're doing, but the uh, twenty six twenty is real powerful. And then I use um, you know I've got the attachments for that. I do have multiple uh, extensions. I think I have probably three or four extensions that I can put with my trimmers. I try not doing that very often. I have a couple properties where I do that, and it is horrible on your shoulders. But um, you know it beats toting around a ladder. Um, it's just kind of what I do. Most of the time, everything that I do extension-wise can be done with one pull and just the trimmer head itself on the PAS system. So if I was going to say like the ultimate trimmer, trimmer system, just get the PAS and upgrade with the extension pull down the road. The only problem with that is you are trimming these smaller bushes. You'd have to hold it up like you were, you know, the weed eater units above your head. And it's kind of a pain to get the low small stuff and try to do the spheres with it so if you're constricted by space you might just want to go with these smaller trimmers to begin with that really all depends on you and what you what you deal with um like i said a lot of my bushes are around like you know roof line height um as far as the mulch we're putting in red mulch uh color lock probably from lowe's or home depot anytime i do bags we get it from lowe's or home depot and then i use a um, company in Tulsa for bulk supplies. Um, when I first started out, I used um, Sutherlands and I just went to Sutherlands. I'd have them fill up my trailer and then I would go do the mulch and I would, you know, um, I'd use a shovel and I would put it into uh, like a real wide shovel, almost like a snow shovel, but I don't know what to call them. But, anyways, I would shovel it right into a wheelbarrow. Um, if you're going to wheelbarrow mulch, the big wheelbarrows, the eight cubic foot wheelbarrows, even though they're plastic, um, the big eight foot cubic wheelbarrows with the two wheels on them are awesome. So, I mean, that's like my favorite wheelbarrow just because of the stability. You never have to really worry about it tipping over. You can abuse, abuse them like crazy. They're super light and, uh, you know, you just, you don't have to worry about tipping them. It's stable. It's less work on your body, even though you can carry a bigger payload. So that's really what I like doing. Normally with bags, if I'm doing bags, I'll pull out the mower, put them on the front of the mower, and then pull them up to the yard. It, de it depends on how wet the lawn is, though. Um, when I use bag mulch, it's normally because we're doing like a yard or less, or maybe two yards or less, kind of in that range. If we're doing anything more than that, I like to buy it in bulk. Uh, that doesn't mean bulked bags. That means I go and actually get the material from the yard like I was talking about. So Sutherlands is what I used to use. Um, I like to use Tulsa Sod and Mulch now. Uh, they've got more variety and, you know, they're just pretty cool. I like supporting them. They're cool people. Um, 
Yeah, so I mean that's that's kind of how I do it. As far as like how much it costs per yard, I think um, you know when you're looking at bags and you're looking at uh, bulk, they're pretty similar. Your cost is going to be a little more expensive with bag mulch normally, and you know you're probably somewhere in the uh, thirty-five to forty dollar range for mulch. It just depends on what you get. Uh, most of them are around, I'd say, 40, 45 per yard. So a yard of bagged mulch, if you're getting two cubic foot bagged mulch, it's uh, right around 13 bags for a yard. Uh, there's 27 cubic feet in a uh, yard. So three times three times three makes a box. That's a cubic yard. All right. Um, and so that's when I'm talking about a yard of mulch, that's what I'm referring to. Just because I really don't think in bags. I can eyeball it and I can go, okay, this property needs two yards or three yards, whatever. I don't really measure that stuff anymore. And normally when I'm doing mulch, I um, what I will do is I will put properties together where they have the same type of mulch. So if they're natural cypress, those properties are going on one day. If they're red mulch, those properties are going on one day. If it's black mulch, they're going on one day. If it's a double shredded hardwood mulch or triple shred, got to say that material is awesome. That's going to go on one day. Um, so, you know, I'm able to really, if I have a little extra, then I can move it over to the other property. At the end of it, if I have any extra, I kind of do the mulch in my front flower bed or something. But normally, because it's a real small area, but normally we don't have much extra. Um, bulk, you're either going to have a little less or a little more anyways just because it really all depends on the loader so some guys that are gonna load it up because they use a skid loader they might fill the bucket and overfill it which those guys are cool uh, but <laughs> sometimes they you know fill it up and shake it off and they're like you know it's it's gotta be perfect yeah well you know and it really all depends on them um, another good thing to do uh, this has a rock border and it's got a we didn't really have to do it on this job but sometimes you have um, just concrete or you have a metal edging I like to take a pick and actually dig around that metal edging on the inside of the bed not the outside but on the inside of the bed and get the soil and old mulch away from that edge and that way it'll have a, a beveled edge where the mulch can you know butt up against it and stay and, and then it doesn't wash out as much because people really care about that. Uh, one of the biggest complaints they'll have is not so much fading or this and that or whatever. It's you put the mulch in and it washes out and they're like, yeah, that looks like crap. So, you know, that's something to uh, consider. Um, and then, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of these rock edges, by the way, if you guys have ever used them. So I don't know if, how many people on here, lawn care guys or homeowners, but... If you're a homeowner and you're planning on putting these in, or you're a landscaping guy and you're planning on putting in these specific rocks, like the Home Depot uh, border wall rocks that you can get that are made out of concrete that are rough edge, when you go by them with a weed eater and you're weed eating the grass, it tends to pull little pieces of that rock off and it will hit you in the face, it'll hit you in the legs, um, not a fan of it. That's just my opinion. I've, I've put it in before. I've made that mistake. I mean, when you're in the very beginning of your business, you do a lot of stuff that you wouldn't do later on. Uh, but that that's just part of the learning curve. You're learning a lot about, uh, about the job. And it's just part of it. So you're going to make a lot of mistakes when you're starting out. Um, and I wouldn't really consider that a mistake. It comes down to what somebody wants. Now, on the actual bed, if you're looking at the mulch and you pull the mulch out and it's super super thick you might have to remove some of that old mulch as well the best thing to do there is if you got a powerful backpack blower you can pull it out you might have to use a um, I've got a cultivating tool that has got like three or four teeth on it and you can actually pull and scrape that stuff back and then blow it out uh, these older blowers like he's about to use here that's a PB 580T I believe um, they're not very powerful. They're not not strong at all. The uh, 770 is decent powered, but even up, even the 770, which I was like, yeah, this thing's awesome. When I put my 770 up against my 8010 now, it it sounds ridiculous saying it, but it's like using a hand blower. Um, and they weigh the same. 
The 8010 is a little more cumbersome though. Uh, those headphones I was wearing, by the way, if you saw them, big bulky headphones. Um, I got those from a guy named Steven Walker a few years ago. Those those were awesome headphones, except they were really, really hot during the summer. But during the winter, man, they were like earmuffs. They were awesome and awesome sound. So, you know, hit him up if you want some of those. Uh, I don't know if he sells them anymore, but I'm sure he can get you in contact. So, this guy here uh, used to be one of my employees. Wasn't an employee for very long. Um, but his name's Donnie. And, uh, yeah, Donnie was a pretty decent worker. He was kind of typical of what I would see in, in lawn care. He's done it before. He kind of has a checkered past. And, um, you know, I mean, that was, that is what it is. For me, uh, in the past when I was looking at employees, I'm getting more strict about it now, but in the past when I was looking at employees, it was always who was convenient. So Donnie actually lived like three houses down from me. And, uh... You know, that was what was convenient. He, he walked up and he said, hey, uh, you need somebody to work? I was like, yes, I do. And uh, so we got him in through the onboarding process and got him taken care of. And uh, I think he worked with us for probably two or three months. Uh, it wasn't too long. He's in a couple of my videos. I've had, I don't know, I want to say in, in my lawn business, probably, I don't know, uh, four or five employees that lasted a few months and then easily 20 or 30 people that didn't make it four hours you'll find out a lot of people in this this uh business when they come to work for you they'll be like yeah i can mow a lawn i used to mow my grandma's lawn every weekend and uh or that's what they're thinking in the head i mean i've done that at job interviews Psh, yeah i can do that and really in my head i'm thinking Psh, i can do just about anything just give me a chance to do it and i'll do it i'll figure it out Luckily, I'm one of the employees that truly can pull that off, but uh, a lot of people, a lot of people can't, and uh, they'll normally quit in this job, especially if you're hiring somebody later in the year around uh, July or August when it starts getting hot. They won't last half the day sometimes. It's, uh, you know, really physically tasking on the body. All right, so at this point, Donnie's blowing off the uh, bushes and inside the beds because we're getting ready for the mulch. When you're blowing off boxwoods, um, they have a, a tight canopy, but the inside um, stems move very easy. So like the woody part will move real easy. So if you blow on them too hard, you'll actually move the bush out of shape and you'll have to reposition it or retrim it and it'll just look ugly. So you know, lightly rake and then very, very, very lightly blow off if you're gonna use a blower. The other thing is, I want you to look in the yard right now and by that mulch, you'll see that stupid rake with the metal tines. I'm not a fan of those. I have no idea why I had those. Uh, I imagine I bought them somewhere at the beginning of my business and they just kind of floated around. The other day I threw those away because I cannot stand them. They're incredibly inefficient, and uh, I just don't think they have a place in my business. I guess if you use them to spread out mulch and level it out, that's fine. But for the most part, I personally think they're worthless. I'd rather use a um, just a regular leaf rake anytime I have to use a rake. Because the only time I'm busting out a rake is to get trimmings or you know bush trimmings like this or something out of the lawn and you need something a little more stiff to get things out of the lawn um, so I mean I don't know somebody else might use them well I don't know why he's blowing these trimmings up to the house um, <laughs> but yeah he just blew the trimmings up onto the concrete onto the porch he's gonna have to blow that out later maybe he's doing something I'm not sure uh, ideally he's getting everything in the same spot so that he can blow it out uh, now before he lay this mulch uh, there's some weed pulling. We probably did that while we were laying the mulch because there's not much. Um, but yeah, we would lay the mulch. Um, before you lay the mulch, you got to prep the bed. So you're going to pull the weeds and stuff like that out. Uh, the thicknesses, I like to lay between two to four inches. That's been debated on the high side on what people should lay it at, whether it's three 
or you know two inches or whatever so two inches is like topping it off and just making it look pretty uh, three to four inches would be uh, re-establishing that bed with mulch so say you took all the mulch out and you're gonna put new mulch in um, that's just kinda how I always do it and it's really all dependent on the client the more I get into it the more that I see that people really just you know they don't like a lot of options and you know so they just want you to tell them how you do it and then just you know take care of it for them um, so I'll explain to them the, the two scenarios I don't really give them an option I say yeah your bed in this situation needs this and then I just tell them you know the price accordingly obviously if you're doing three or four inches you need more material if you're doing two inches you don't need as much and there's a different price um, it's always better to have a little more material than it is to not have enough material because you can have a little more and especially in bags you can either use it on another property or you can take it back uh, I don't really take stuff back because I know I'm going to use mulch somewhere else right but if I have a little extra then hey no big deal I just charge them for what I used and then you know I use that material somewhere else um, but if I don't have enough then you gotta go to the store and you gotta get more and that's when it gets very very expensive to be in business being cheap about stuff will bite you every time so I always buy you know a, a little bit more than what I expect to use um, and I always end up with a little bit more than what I expected to use and that's cool because I always end up using it on some little project somewhere or like I said redoing my flower bed and that makes my wife happy she's always really happy when that happens um, so we use the uh, tarp method here we're just getting the bulk off there's gonna be a little bit left in the lawn I'll disperse that out later and then I actually go in and uh, mow this lawn um, really right after this job I think so you know you want to come in and clean it up if you can ideally like I said I used to pair that with my mowing I don't really get to do that anymore with as much as we're getting and then this year we also had the painting business as well so it was like this constant shuffle on my time between lawn care the extras like um, you know mulch rock um, putting in beds trimming bushes um, just all the excess stuff that you do on a property um, plus the painting business it, it was and then we we had to contend with rain we had a record year for rain this year so I mean that was cool lessons learned I stayed caught up which was amazing I think I lost about five cuts per property um, but I was out there and I was trimming them um, it was kind of lost in a different way than it wasn't like they were just lost from not showing up they were lost from being late so it was like an accumulative thing over the season where you lose like three days here and then three days on this week and then like two days on that week well after a while that means you could have fit an extra cut in there so you basically lose a cut and that's the way I look at it so you know while I was staying caught up I was still losing income um, so yeah now as we're doing the mulch, like you see I'm, I'm pouring it out I'm trying to spread it when you're using um, bulk mulch um, if you have wide areas it works out real good bag mulch is great for these tight areas because you can actually get behind there with a bag and pour it where you need it to because we get behind all the bushes and stuff as well um, but you know if you can pour the bags where you want if there's a big wide open area I do like to use bulk mulch because I can pull the wheelbarrow up to it and just fling it out and you know then it kind of spreads as we're going um, but small beds like this it's it's nothing to spread some mulch um, now the other thing is you can see how I kind of have it poured on the uh, rocks you know on the border rock now as we're doing that um, not too big of a deal just spread the mulch like we normally would and then afterwards I go along and very very lightly blow that stuff back into the bed and uh, any other trimmings are gonna get blown away from the bed uh, judging by the outside here um, this would have been sometime in I want to say probably um, mid-May to early June 
and like I said, now I do my mulch normally in January. Uh, I would have started by now already. So we've actually, we're a little bit delayed on starting our mulch. We'll be starting that sometime within the next week or so. Uh, we've had a lot of rain down here, so everything's really, really wet. And when you're doing mulch, you got to get on your knees a lot. And, you know, then you're, it's, it's just not as uh, easy, easy messing with stuff when it's wet. You know, the ground's wet, it's cold. I don't need to get sick and I don't want to get James sick. Um, and then the other thing is... Uh, with that if you do have to use a wheelbarrow and you have weight in that wheelbarrow and then you're tracking back and forth you know whether it's walking or using that wheelbarrow then you're going to be putting track marks in the property itself whether that's by ruts or actually matting the grass down into the uh, mud so then you have issues where you'll have to either seed or replace that with some sod um, so it really all depends on the job and the property at hand but it's very easy to cause damage this time of the year. The other th the other downside to doing mulch in the winter time is uh, material supply is not always as easy to come by. So if I'm wanting bags, and say cypress is actually something we can't get in bulk. Anything in bulk I can get this time of year, no problem. But like cypress or pine bark, it it's a little more uh, difficult to come by this time of year. Um, just because one you got to go to Lowe's and they got the outside shut down Lowe's or Home Depot I don't really care uh, if I'm working on stuff and I'm getting wooden stuff I prefer Home Depot but as far as like getting mulch I don't really care either one they sell the same products with different bags um, oftentimes the same product uh, if they have a deal whatever but I'm not driving across town to save 20 cents that's, that's something that you if you're in business and you're in a small town and you've only got one place to get material cool no big deal uh, also if you're in a big town and you got to drive to another town to get material that's a lot bigger deal than it is for me but for me I can normally shuttle you know 10 or 15 miles and get material anywhere I want here but uh, the downside in the winter is you know like I said they had the outside locked up but you know that's, that's just throwing it out there just you know you don't want to have to shuttle back, shuttle around and get materials. I, I'm not going to drive 15 miles out of my way to go to a different place because it's 10 cents cheaper on a bag. At that point, it's costing you more money to drive there, taking up more time. If you have your employee with you, it's taking up labor time. Um, it's just non-billable time. You want to get to that job as quick as possible. And in reality, that mulch isn't costing me a dime. It's not. My labor shouldn't cost me a dime. All that should be built in your cost, and the uh, client, you know, they, they're going to pay for all that. So they're going to take care of your mulch. They're going to take care of your, your employee. So if you're worried about that, it's just the stage you're at in business. Um, so, you know, if you're really worried about labor, and now you have to be aware, like I said, don't drive across town to save a few pennies. But um, definitely just, just be conscious of their time. And the fact that it's costing you money, but I don't care about the pennies too much. So even if it's like, say I, I take him to a lunch and it's like 30 minutes. Well, that's one time a week. That's no big deal. That does add up over time. But then you're you're coming into cost. Man, I'm talking about different subjects here. But uh, with something like that, you're coming in the cost of creating a culture in your business versus the cost of what that employee actually cost you. So like creating an environment that people enjoy to work in is, um, while it's expensive, it, I mean it can be expensive, um, it'll make you money if your employees are happy. So I don't feed my employees every day. Um, that's something I used to do is I'd buy them lunch, I'd buy them water, I'd buy them Gatorade, I'd buy them energy drinks. They'd always end up weaseling me into getting them smokes. When I smoke, they'd either smoke mine or they'd be like, yeah, I'm out, Kevin. You can take it out of my check. And then it never happens that way. Um, it just doesn't. For me, personally, I'm, I'm not going to buy them lunch. I don't want to buy them energy drinks. That is their habit. That's why they have a job. I'll take care of the necessities, make sure they have water and stuff like that. But anything above that, that's all on them.